this Christmas we're celebrating more than just a little baby that came and was born in a manger in a little stable, but we're celebrating uh, this King Jesus that came uh, to change lives. And uh, as you can see there, 60 years of hatred and bitterness released at the cross. Uh, just an awesome story of transformation. Barbara, thank you for sharing that. And you do have an awesome grandson. <clears throat> well, we want, I want to invite somebody else up um, to, to share with you for a few moments, too, before we um, have our message for the evening, although this is a message for sure. Uh, the point, again, of this evening is to see the, the, a different life. The revolution is that we're to live a different life than everybody else, okay? And so, Miss Paula, if you could come forward. Miss Paula, you guys all know Paula. You welcome her. <clears throat> She'd like to share with you how Jesus has changed her life. Sure, I said I wasn't going to cry. I'm already crying. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about health and faith. <clears throat> I know a lot of people here have had health issues and things that have gone on. And um, in August of 2014, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I had no money, no insurance. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do. But the first thing I did was I prayed. And I asked all of you to pray and other churches and uh, anybody I came in contact with, really. And, um, and I had faith. You know, I had my moments of why me and all of those human things that you go through. But basically, I had a peace about it. And I looked to humans because I had to trust some humans to do operations and give me answers and all those things. But I asked God to heal me. And one thing that I came to understand is that when you ask God to heal you, it doesn't always happen that you go back to the doctor and there's nothing there or, you know, that it miraculously goes away. Sometimes you have to walk a path and he's going to show you other things. And that's what happened to me. Um, I'll just go down a list really quickly of the miracles that occurred during all of my recovery. Um, I was sent to a human person called a navigator who was supposed to show me the way through all of this. And I got, uh, you know, she first, she said, we have no insurance, no money. I, I don't know, we have to work things out. Well, she got me the top surgeon in Orlando. He's the medical director of the gyne oncology group over there. He did my operation pro bono. Um, fortunately, by the time I had the operation, I had Obamacare insurance. So he did get paid something, but uh, the hospital got paid very little. Um, I then went on to, uh, I also needed, I had AFib of the heart, so I needed cardiac clearance for the surgery. Um, I could not find a cardiologist that was willing to take my money. So um, this navigator sent me a list of 100 cardiologists in Orlando. I went over the list and I prayed over it. And there was one in the middle of the list that was in Tavares. And I said, well, I'll call them first because they're nearby. And they said, sure, we'll give you a payment plan and we'll do the test you need. And I got cardiac clearance. Then when I had to have chemotherapy, I went, I got one of the top oncologists over here and the head oncology nurse was assigned to me. All of this with very little payment. You know, there was some insurance, but not much payment. Also, um, my diagnosis was um, third stage B with lymph involvement. And then I came here, and you all prayed over me. And when I went back for my next visit, they said, well, the pathology came back, you're stage three, but A, which is better, and no lymph involvement, which was important. They already took them out, but... You know, that was important. And the list just went on, but about three weeks ago or so, I heard um, a girl testify in a group that she was abused as a child and you know, a lot of bad things happened to her and she became a drug addict and all of this. And the world told her, well, you know, you're a victim and you deserve to feel bad. And so you could do all these things. 
But God told her, no, you can forgive these people and you can change your life. And so when people started telling me, oh, you have to have chemotherapy and you have to have radiation and, you know, oh, you should feel bad and all this, I said, no, I have God. And I'm going to do what God's telling me. And God, God told me, don't be afraid. He told me, take care of yourself, eat right, rest. And I did that. And I went, he carried me through that completely. And um, I had very little side effects, very little problems. <clears throat> and uh, so what I want to say is that... Um, you know, God is always there, and he's watching over you. And there were things I needed to deal with. Procrastination was a big thing in my life, and that's part of the reason why I ended up so bad, because I didn't go to the doctor and get checked when I knew there was something wrong. And um, so he has put me on notice about procrastinating with anything. And, um, you know, I believe there was a lot of lessons that came out of that. And um, Florida Hospital forgave $134,000 worth of bills. And I had a folder this thick of other bills from all of this, and it's now about that big. Most of them were forgiven one way or another. And, I, and other places have been gracious enough to let me pay them little by little. So... Um, and I want to thank everybody for praying for me. On October 15th, I had a PET scan, which is a cancer detector, and some uh, cancer marker tests, and they all were clean. Amen. Amen. But I'm still going to do some radiation just as a preventative, so I hope everybody will pray for me that that goes as well. And um, so that's it. Thank you. As the camera comes up, you can see...